This is Community Connections with Anna, airing on Aromia 11. I am your host, and today's guest will be Sammy McDowell of Sammy's Avenue Eatery. He is also the founder of the new dining hall that is coming to Golden Valley. We're going to talk food, community, and impact. Stay tuned. Talk to me a little bit about your passion for cooking. Um, well, I feel like my passion for, for cooking and entertaining came from my grandmother. She was such a um, pillar in my um, developing years of um, just watching her entertain, watching her serve her community as the uh, lady to go to to have whatever you know parties block parties church events all those type of things she was just huge on you know aesthetics making sure that everything was tasting good looking good you know so I think I kind of just watched her over the years and it just became a part of me I think there definitely is an honorary degree for our grandmothers and Amen. our aunts that have, uh, and those church ladies, right, that always pulled off the dinners and the mm -hmm. church anniversaries and all of the beautiful holidays in our life. Absolutely. I don't think we actually realize that that is a full-time career that people are paid handsomely for. Absolutely. And they did it just organically, yeah, you know, during natural. their time, yep, for whatever reason, you know, just to celebrate people and she was huge on that. So I often um, refer to our um, cafe as that, you know, like it's it's home. It's like your living room. You come in, you're welcome. You know, we want to we want to not just entertain you, but we want to make sure that you're having awesome cuisine and, you know, laughter and all those things that you would feel when you go to your grandmother's house, you know. So. I think it definitely comes across when you walk into the establishment. There is definitely a familiarity there. Yeah. Even though, you know, you're like, we're not related, but it's like there's something here that is so familiar to me, aside from the amazing food and the wonderful smiling faces. Can you talk to me about in 2012, what had you decide to transition from this being a passion of yours to a business? Well, I feel like um, I'm a spiritual person, so I feel like I was led to do uh, so. Even before I actually took the leap of faith to go do it, I was feeling it, you know, coming on where it was something where I needed to uh, serve my community in a uh, capacity that I wasn't doing, able to do in a corporate world. So I was um, really led to just kind of branch out and do my own thing in a um more personable way, you know, where I could actually touch community and affect community a little more without the uh, corporate hangover. So I um, decided to really just take the leap of faith and just go out and do it, you know, so. Now you talked about being a part of the corporate world prior to this. Where did you initially come from? What was the big dream as a child if we'd walked up to Kid Sammy and said, so what are you gonna do when you grow up? Um, if you uh, came up to Kid Sammy, Kid Sammy was very, was very imaginative. So he probably would have told you he wanted to be an astronaut or <laughs> an astronaut, a gymnast, you know, just, right. you know, I had a variety of things that I wanted to do. I honestly, and when I look back in hindsight, it was like, um, even as a kid, putting limitations on uh, young Sammy was not that thing. I did not want to be limited mm -hmm. into what I wanted to do. So I feel like if God give me gives us grace, you know, we can explore many parts of life, you know, in different facets. So, but cooking and entertaining was all one of those things that I really kind of clung to because I felt like it would, um, you know, it always brought us together. It always, people were happy, people were having fun. So those type of things, it's like, how do you incorporate that into a career other than being a chef or being a cook or being, you know. Uh, so that's kind of what led me to where I'm at now. It's just, you know, I've always wanted to entertain in that aspect, you know, so. How did your love of cooking translate into two booming businesses? Not just one, which is, 
almost unheard of when you think about small businesses and the landscape of where we are nationally. It's like you're going to not only have one business booming in one area, you're going to launch in another area, and they're both doing really, really well. I, I just think it goes back to community needing uh, more than just food. You know, obviously we need, you know, good wholesome food in our community, but community needs community. We need to have a space where we can actually talk about what's going on in today and what's happening around us and all those things and just be able to be free to have a public space where you can commune with your neighbors and talk about those type of things. So creating those spaces is one of those things that, you know, I'm um, really after because I, I feel like we have our corporate uh, places, our corporate restaurants, and so, but it's not, you know, it's not really um, community. You know, you can't go in there and meet your neighbor and, you know, even meet the local police officer or the mayor may stop by, the governor, whoever, you know. So those type of things is where, you know, those kind of spaces is what I think um, my mindset is kind of, you know, drawn towards, you know. so. When I'm able to uh, set something like that up, it's like community was asking for it. It was almost like a drink of water that a thirsty person was needing. Absolutely. So that's kind of what um, it's become. So as many as much opportunity as we have to create those spaces, I want to keep you know moving forward with that. So. You've talked some about community and about being able to come in and meet your neighbors and civic leadership and things like that, but your location is so pivotal, not only through um, the Twin Cities social climate and things that have been taking place with the murder of Jamar Clark and the death of George Floyd and so many others. How did you manage to stay that consistent um, space of peace but also conversation during those times? Yeah, I think we've we've um, managed to um, um, just kind of create this space where people are um, we're very aware of what's going on around us, um, but we've also um, because I try to infuse it, you know, to we have to be solution based, mm -hmm. you know, and that's what the the kind of spirit I kind of. Uh, push in those spaces because I want us to understand what happened, but I also want us to understand that there can be a resolve. There can be something that we can do about it, and it doesn't involve, you know, de destruction. It doesn't d involve, you know, retaliation and all those things because it's never s uh, was supposed to be them against us or anything like that. But it's a as a community, we work together to resolve issues and all those things. So I think the community kind of knows uh, my heart behind those things. So when things happen, like when George Floyd happened, we organically as a community came together and everybody came and they just uh, asked what, what did we need to get the mission done or you know we wanted to protect our community we wanted to feed our community we wanted to embrace our community we wanted to hug them if they needed therapy or counseling we wanted to provide that for them you know so those are the type of things and if i could refer back to my grandmother's house those are the type of things that my grandmother did for her community mm -hmm. um, without it even being a, a, a title to it right she just organically did it so i think it just in essence became our grandmother's house you know it's like that's where you come when there's tragedy when there's disruption or whatever we go there and we find peace we find calm we can sit down we can talk have a some tea or whatever Absolutely. so that's kind of what we uh i think we kind of built that um kind of atmosphere and that's what people they respect that and they came to it when the times got tough and we were able to as a community have some resolve, you know, within amongst ourselves and then reach out to our civic leaders and stuff and try to get them involved as well so we can all be on the same page, you know, so. I noticed that during that <clears throat> entire corridor area where you're located over north, that there were so many businesses that were closing down, whether it was due to COVID, whether it was due to um, some of the um, looting and some of the burning and damages to businesses. 
but your door stayed consistently open, whether it was holding space for people to come and talk or to come and grieve like you shared, or for people to just come in and grab a bite and see a familiar face. Mm -hmm. And I feel like those are some of the principles of uh, being a part of such a close-knit community over in North Minneapolis that we don't see highlighted enough. Yeah, absolutely. And that was one of the most important things to me. I said, if, you know, I went into my savings to make sure that we maintained wow. our presence and stayed open because I wanted to make sure that there was always a light in our community shining you know so we um as a community young people even need to see that oh they're not putting up boards they're not you know because we do, we didn't want to be a dead zone we wanted to I, I was like we we have to stay alive so whatever we have to do to stay alive and to stay open and to stay as a beacon for our community let's do that you know so even the staff you know they were like well we you know they were willing to take a pay cut all those things they came to me with that you know, just so we could, uh, because they they see what we're doing as, you know, as our um, uh, restaurant. We're not just, you know, they always say we're not just a regular restaurant. I learned that when I started working here. We're more than that. I was like, well, yeah, we're more than that. So they understand that as well. So, but uh, thankfully, we were able to, you know, keep the doors open. We were able to uh, set up f a food shelf for several months. Uh, for people to come and uh, essential uh, items, you know, people could come and get it in our uh, spare space that we have. We set up a whole uh, network of uh, contacts for folks to call if they needed mental help and all this kind of stuff. So we did all of that in our um, space and we just stayed open. And at one point we were open, I think, 24 hours uh, for a month straight right after the uh, George Floyd um, with um, partnerships with the NAACP and other organizations, you know, to um, help folks who needed any kind of help at all, you know, during that time because everybody was kind of distraught in the community. So we wanted to pull together and just embrace, you know, people and just kind of give them a big grandma hug, yeah. you know, in a sense of, hey, it's going to be okay, you know, think this is happening. But we will get through it and we will um, be better for it and we will be more knowledgeable when we come out of it. So, Absolutely. so yeah. Now, thinking about where you're located, you are literally above the Emerge offices or below the Emerge offices, correct? And then adjacent to Neon, the north side, excuse me, is it? So we're, we're um, so Neon moved across the street now. Okay. So, and then Neon is like a block away, which is very close. And then upstairs, we have the Episcopal Church of Minnesota. Wow. So they bought, they purchased our, that building from us about almost three years ago. Okay. So they came in and, you know, they were so gracious and remodeled the space mm -hmm. and wow. all that stuff for us and, we were kind of blown away as to why this a predominantly white organization would inhabit a space in North Minneapolis. So, so a lot of our customers, you know, they were asking, who are all these white people and where do they come from? And right. then, so I finally asked the bishop over the, um, um, the Episcopal Church, like, why are you guys, why did you guys decide to come to North Minneapolis to um, put your headquarters? Um, and they have about 163 churches around Minnesota. Wow. And plus, you know, big businesses and nursing homes and Breck School and right. all that. So, and he said, uh, Sammy, um, honestly, it's because of you. And we've heard so much about you from every meeting I go to. The pastors are always like right, talking about Sammy and what Sammy did and what Sammy... And I was like, really, unbeknownst to me, I had no idea um, that some of the customers were pastors of these different churches and stuff. And when they came in, they just saw stuff. I didn't tell them anything, but they just saw us doing things. They saw us helping community. They saw us giving away free meals and doing all this stuff. And he said um, he spied on us a couple times. And he came and he saw me one day giving away all this food to these people. And he was like, it was like a hundred and some people in that space. And I couldn't believe that small space would have that many people. And I was like, um, 
because I, I think that year I did Easter dinner and I just gave Easter dinner away or whatever. But anyway, so he's, he said that's the reason and they wanted to be a part of something like that. They wanted to embrace something like that because that's part of that's pretty much their mission. And there is for them to see someone doing it without, um, you know, just doing it because yeah. they were like, we want to be a part of that. We want to know how that organically happens. We plan for stuff like this, but you're just doing it because you're doing it. And I was like, it was amazing. Like, I was like, really? You know, like, he was like, yeah. So they bought a almost $3 million building. Wow. Because the work that we were doing. Because of you and your community work. Because I think this sounds more so I thought that this was going to truthfully I thought this was going to be a conversation much more about your entrepreneurship and things like that but I think what seems to be unfolding more and more is that this has a lot to do with your purpose and Absolutely. what you're supposed to be doing not just inside of your business and for the community but on behalf of a bigger source altogether. Amen. So yeah. I'm, I'm encouraged to not only hear that people not only are coming towards you to help and to try to plug in, but that they also are saying, we've seen what's been going on and we want to become a part of that. Mm -hmm. I think that's a different that's a different conversation when people want to come alongside of you and begin working as well, Absolutely. not just to watch or to applaud the work that you've been doing mm -hmm. so far. Can you talk to me about what it means to be recognized um, by the governor, Governor Waltz, as well as uh, the Northside Equal Opportunity Network a couple of years ago, and so many others for the community work that you've been doing? It means a lot. It means, a, you know, I, I, I honestly am just really doing what I feel like, what I feel led to do. So it's not, I don't feel like it's something special as other people do because i feel like if everybody followed their heart and followed what they were supposed to be doing they would be doing similar or same work you know so it's it's not a big deal to me because once again it's what my grandmother did mm. organically without being prompt so to me it's just natural to do it you know but it seems like it's a big deal to a lot of folks and you know, I appreciate the uh, recognition. Um, we were just recognized this weekend, past weekend, by the governor at his State of the State address. And it was like, um, I just not, could not believe the whole um, auditorium stood up. That's and a huge deal. The Congratulations. And he said, Sammy, the Republicans and the Democrats, everybody <laughs> stood up. You know, usually you get one or the other. That's true. And I was just like, you know, that's amazing. You know, <clears throat> didn't expect it, so... Um, so it's good to be recognized and it's good to um, bring the, you know, I brought the folks along who actually make it happen. I told them I need to bring the whole management staff on um, to the state capitol as well. So they all got to come and experience Absolutely. that as well. Um, just got a call last night actually from um, Quorum, which is a, a LGBTQ organization. And they have um, uh, nom or made me business of the year. So I'll, they'll have a ceremony coming up here. And I'm just like, what? You know, where did that come from? Like, who, I, you know, so I didn't even know who they were. But I was like, thank you. I really appreciate that, yeah. you know, um, uh, recognition, you know. So it's just it's good to be recognized for the work that we're doing. But um, but it's just who we are. You know, it's what we do. So. But it does feel good to know that people are actually watching you, you know, and finding something good in North Minneapolis because it's a great community and it always has been, you know, and there's some great people, some great families in our community. Um, so we just want to make sure that we're representing those folks. And um, obviously every part of the world has riffraff. You know, but that shouldn't be dwelt on as big. You know, we yeah. should hype up the good stuff. So we want to make an impact and make sure that we're um, emphasizing all the good that North Minneapolis is, is has at the table. We definitely do. And I think you are one of those good things to talk about and to promote. Okay. Can you share with me how you navigate having the capacity to juggle two businesses, another one pending, am I correct in that? Absolutely. And then trying to have a life and some level of sanity how do you try to balance having the capacity for all of that it's is definitely a um task um 
But I think I'm realizing and learning that there are some very capable folks out there who can get the job done and who has the same heart and who feels the same about uh, community and who feels the same way about treating our people with respect and dignity, you know, um, even if they're coming to get a sandwich or whatever, you know, so that um, level of uh, concern that they have for the community, they, um, they see how I deal with, you know, the random person or the person who we think is not uh, supposed to be in our space. Mm -hmm. You know, they see how I deal with them because um, I always say when I when people look into the eatery, I want them to see America. You know, I want them to see the so-called thug, the businessman, the businesswoman, the, you know, the middle, the person struggling. I want them to see all of those people co-inhabiting and, you know, mingling together and, you know, those kind of opportunities or those kind of arrangements builds opportunities for some people because there's been certain people who've gotten jobs by being in the same, you know, space as, you know, someone who could offer them a job. Mm. So it's like if you bring those those things together, sometimes, um, you know, the magic can happen. So um, but it's a it's a balance. But it I feel like people want they want to uh, be community. Um, so it's e- once we set those kind of set the atmosphere that way, it kind of just organically happens. And now I'm learning to trust those people who are capable to do their jobs to, for them to do their jobs. And I'm learning how to back away and to, you know, work on other aspects of the business. And that because once you find somebody with the same heart that you feel like, oh, they'll treat that person you know, just like I would. So I feel comfortable leaving them in charge of that space. And that's kind of, you know, the thing I'm, I've learned. So I'm able to pull back and to handle other things because we have a great management staff now and they're doing an awesome job and they're treating people um, with respect and then with dignity no matter who they are. You know, so I was like, I don't care if it's the uh, president, governor, whoever. Absolutely. Allow them to have their peace. They come in for coffee, let them drink their coffee. And, you know, everybody should just be normal <laughs> when we're there, you know. So there's no celebrities there. It's no, if you come in there, you're not really a celebrity. You're, you're you know, you're just part of the community. Yeah. So, and I think that's why some of the politicians really appreciate mm-hmm. coming there too, because we're not like, oh, hey, you know, try to, we know we we're not we don't need any favors. We so just, you say this isn't an opportunity to ask for anything no, or confront you about it's anything. It's just <laughs> you go have your coffee, enjoy the North Minneapolis community, that's right. and then you know, and be a part of it, you know. So and that's kind of what the atmosphere is, and I love it. So absolutely. So if we if we were to say it would be that you have learned to start delegating absolutely. things out to other people now that you have a trusted staff behind you to support. Absolutely. Yeah. What's next for you? Can you um, talk to me about how you navigated not only moving into the space that you were in, but also deciding like, we're going to be here rain or shine. That I'm, you're, you know what I mean? That you're like, I'm not going to be moved. Mm-hmm. We're here and whatever happens here is going to happen. I know that the area in which you're located in, I'm thinking of the north, in the north side um, restaurant, but mm-hmm. how did you decide in this area, this is where we're going to put our roots? Well, it, um, it took a while t- for us to uh, decide on that because I didn't want to be stretched, uh, f- uh, you know, too far. And a lot of people um, gave advice on, we love to see you when we come in and we're not going to be able to see you if you're, you know, multiple spaces and different things like that. And prayerfully, I knew that we had to grow like we we had to grow because um, we I've decided um, that I'm going to listen. And I know that I have to be representation for our young people. And like I didn't really have an example of doing what I do mm-hmm. uh, in the business sense. So I said, um, and I even told the governor this, I was like, you can walk outside every day on your front porch and see examples of success that look like you. I was like, we don't have that in our community. 
we don't have that uh, luxury of walking out the door and seeing um, success, business success that looks like us, you know, right in front of our face. We have to go look for it mm -hmm. somewhere. So I was like, I want to create that uh, some kind of model in our community where we can um, we can say, hey, there's uh, Sammy up at, you know, he's been there for years and, you know, that's he's been working at business and he's growing that business. And he started right here in the north side of Minneapolis or, Absolutely. you know, so that kind of um, thing is one of those things that is really encouraging me to push forward and to have multiple locations. So our young people can know that it's possible to uh, dream, have a dream and then to accomplish it and bring it all the way through, you know, and um, and keep it, you know, and it's not one of those things that's here today and gone tomorrow. But we're uh, consistent in our community and. We're uh, celebrating a decade this year, so we've been there 10 years, so which is a great milestone. Congratulations. Thank you, especially for a black-owned business. So I really want our young people to have examples of business greatness in their, in their face, you know, not just, um, you know, seeing it on TV or anything like that, but you know, you know me and I'm right here. You know, so Absolutely. that's kind of um, one of those things that I'm pushing for, especially for our young, for our entrepreneurs in our community to be more visible. And I'm one, that's one of the things I'm pulling for is for us to be, especially the ones of color, is to be more visible so young people can see what you're doing and they can kind of model after that because we didn't have really a template to go by. Mm -hmm. So I kind of have to, you know, go out there in the deep end and just hope for the best. <laughs> <laughs> but prayerfully, God had had me, and you know we're doing well. So, um, but yeah, so that's one of the um, reasons why we push forward, and we we're, we're going to open up multiple spots, and we're also going to embrace. You know, uh, we're about to open a food hall in North Minneapolis, which will house three other smaller businesses within one business. So, giving um, smaller entrepreneurs an opportunity to um, run their own space within our big space and um, they'll be able to uh, learn and grow and we'll be able to mentor them so they'll be that able is to, so encouraging yeah and they'll be able to launch out and do you know other things as well so because um, a lot of times we don't have that mentorship we don't have that example to go on we just know we know how to do this or right. we know how to do that or we're talented at this but it's like how do I get that talent and make it into a business you know and nobody really in our community has a you know template or a system for that you know so and we have a lot of talented young people in our community so we want to really get them you know activated as leslie ratman would say <laughs> don't complain activate that's right she actually was on a couple episodes ago really so you are a good company <laughs> yes my quoting her can you talk to me about what you want people to experience when they taste your food? Um, I, uh, well, what I've heard is people feel like they are loved. They, and that's honestly what I want them to feel. I want them to feel like um, they're loved. Because I often say that when I'm training or anything, it's like if you do it, if you do it with love, if you're cooking with love, people are going to feel that. I mean, if you don't feel like cooking, don't, mm. don't just go out to eat or something. Right. But if you, if you, um, when you decide to do something for someone, do it because, um, you want to, um, show love, embrace love because they'll enjoy it more and they can tell people can tell if you love what you're doing. So and that's what I constantly tell the staff too. It's like, people know if you love what you're doing and if you don't, they know that too. You know, so and we want people to to feel loved when they eat the food, you know, and then we want them to feel love when they eat the dessert, when they drink or whatever. We want them to feel loved. So. I think you're hitting that nail on the head. I was reading a lot of your social media and looking at some of the Yelp <laughs> reviews and it sounds like the community is really um, grabbing a hold to those sentiments that you expressed. Amen. Can you give entrepreneurs and future entrepreneurs or people that want to work in the food industry a tidbit of advice that you wish someone would have given you along the way? Ooh, I didn't give them a lot that I wish I would have got. <laughs> but, I mean, honestly, the biggest thing I feel like um, that 
um, I spoke on it earlier was really mentorship, like really um, because a lot of people start out and they don't uh, get mentored. And if you're not mentored into what you want to do, it's it it, you kind of start from zero and you got to fight your way through the top. Most professions and most a lot of times when people go to college, they have to do internship and all that kind of stuff. But we don't really give that. And like when people start doing entrepreneurship, Mm -hmm. it's like you have to get under someone for a minute and learn and grow. You know, I was in the restaurant business for 20 odd years before I even opened up my uh, space. Had I not had that experience, it would have been even harder, you know. So I just feel like the mentorship piece is huge. And I feel like um, if at all possible, get with a mentor and work with them for three to six months and you know, help them, let them help you formulate a plan so you can get whatever it is that you want to get out there to the public out there, you know. So just take some time to uh, learn and not just, you know, be so anxious to kind of jump out there, you know. I think that's sound advice. Can mm-hmm. you let us know where both locations are, the north side location and the northeast location, and the soon-to-be third hall to yes. be opening so that we can get <clears throat> people out to your businesses so that they can not only come in and encounter the ambiance we just talked about, but so that they also can come and support the business and become hands and feet and start working alongside you. Amen. So um, we are at um, our original location is 1101 West Broadway Avenue North, and that's in uh, North Minneapolis. Um, so that's our um, flagship store. <laughs> and then we um, we actually moved our northeast location into uh, North Markets Deli. We have taken over North Markets Deli, so we'll be starting that May 1st. So we um, are excited to be partnering with North Market and um, the uh, Pillsbury organization to, to do their, because um, they just need, it needed stability. So we, we decided to go in there and stabilize it for them. You are popping so. up all over. Pillsbury United has, has their hands in a lot of really good work going they on do. currently. They just gifted a bunch of money to the senior class of North High. Absolutely. And now joining with you to do this effort mm-hmm. and bring some fresh food to a food desert. Absolutely. So we'll be having, uh, we'll actually be expanding the menu over there. We'll, we've partnered with another small entrepreneur uh, gravy babies so they'll be doing um like the southern style cuisine and um sammy's avenue eatery will be doing you know our normal deli style food and the combination of the two will be a full ran deli that people can come in and get easter dinner or whatever dinner every night dinner um and also if they want to come in for lunch or breakfast they're able to do that as well so it'll be a full operating um deli uh service counter for anybody in that community. So it's very close still to Northeast. So if people want to come across that bridge, they most definitely can. And our food hall is going to be called um, the Golden Valley Marketplace by Sammy. I'll just sign it. Um, (laughs) I thought that was... Magic too. So and um, we'll um, actually be housing uh, three, I said three, but three and a half uh, small businesses because we'll have a small little uh, cafe area, but it'll be just small. And then we'll have uh, three different other cuisines that people will be able to come in and um, purchase. Um, and uh, just a variety. We'll have a vegan um, space. We'll have a, um, a pizza uh, joint. And then we'll have another um, to be named uh, space in there as well for people to come in and get a variety of different things that you wouldn't normally find in North Minneapolis because we have I always say that North Minneapolis is entitled and we should have everything that all these other communities have Edina and I honestly would love for our stuff to be localized too I don't want it to be necessarily Chipotle I just want it to be uh, something that you know, it's fresh and good, but I was when it locally ran, like, you know, Amaria's, but mm-hmm. her stuff is still as good, you know. Right. So, and then, you know, the same with our coffee houses and what our different cuisines that we would uh, want to have, you know, I want them to just be community ran, you know. So that's my, 
dream and you know things so that's part of the reason why i'm bringing those different things in there because people still want those things they still want a burrito they still want you know their whatever they eat vegan food or whatever um but they just want it you know locally in their neighborhood you know so and still the same quality the same freshness the same you know service and all those things so that's kind of one of those things that i'm fighting for for north minneapolis is to for us to have all that in our community but ran by the community you know i think locally sourced food fresh items as well as like you said vegan options for those that have differing dietary restrictions or choices mm -hmm. should be offered universally yeah absolutely. We, go, we go so many other places and they have two and three different menus and Gosh, oh yeah yes. we have this on the opposite side and we don't really encounter that where we are mm -hmm. so i think that's wonderful um, and that it's actually another facet to a dream that you've had the entire time. Absolutely. Once again, brings me back to the idea of purpose. I'm excited to see what you have coming on the horizon and more so to witness what the ripple effect of you opening these businesses and bringing along organizations and people from the community along with you is really admirable. Yes. Thank you thank for joining you. me today, Sammy. Well, thank you for having me. This has I been really wonderful. I really appreciate it. Absolutely wonderful. Sammy, can you share with us um, your social media handle so that people can kind of start plugging in to kind of help follow you just a little bit? So you can find us on social media. Sammy's Avenue Eatery is all of our uh, handles. <laughs> we're Sammy's Avenue Eatery on, uh, we're at Av Eatery, I'm sorry, on Twitter. Um, Sammy's Avenue Eatery on Instagram and Facebook. And I think that's as far as we've gotten thus far. To, uh, stay tuned for TikTok and Snap. That is all the time we have today for this episode of Community Connections. Once again, I am Anna Orr, and a special thank you to Sammy McDowell and the team over at Sammy's Avenue Eatery. Please check out their locations, and I look forward to connecting with you again soon.